Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now, this is the second part of a three-part saga, building out a large copper and deuterium refinery. That's right, we're using the pure recipes, so refineries are the go-to. Now, in the previous episode, we sourced the location, built out the roads, created a dam, and determined the layout, added some of the first refineries, and then several truck stations. The build is big, built for the future, so that we only ever have to create one copper factory ever. At least that's the idea. So today, we'll be sourcing new materials such as rubber and plastic, adding some architectural features to the build, and determining the logistics for water and copper. Now, as always, the blueprints and production files, including floor plans, colors used, and more, will all be available in the description, and when the build is complete, I'll give out the save file for people to play around with or copy it into their worlds, all for free. All right, without further delay, let's begin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get started, and there's no time to waste. Normally, what I would do at the beginning of an episode here is say, oh, on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see what we're going to be doing, yada, 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 spend a minute on that, but today, we're going to walk and talk. You find me just outside of the controversial coal power facility, which is really controversial for no reason, because it's flawless. <laughs> okay? Flawless. 4,800 megawatts. Boom. Clean lines. And you can go download it for yourself. Of course, my saves and blueprints are all there for everyone. No mods or hacks involved. Anyways, taking the salt out of my tone, what we're going to be doing today is starting with simple oil production. This is why we're down here. By the way, we're on the blue crater part of the map. Coal power plants there. And we're heading out just outside to tap some oil nodes. And why? Well, basically, we want to get some plastic and rubber production up and running. Uh, for two reasons. One, we can advance milestones by just building it up in the background. And two, we actually need a little bit of rubber. Everyone needs a little bit of rubber in their lives now and then. <laughs> to, uh, basically so we can build valves, right? We unlocked being able to use valves, but they require four rubber for each valve. We don't make rubber, so we need to set up something to get that going in the background. So, we haven't done this before in this playthrough, so we need an oil extractor. A normal extractor is capable of 120 oil per minute, and it gives you an automatic head lift of 10 meters. We don't have to worry about any of that for now. We're going to be building on this node, which is actually an impure node, meaning we only get 60 per minute out of it. And there's nodes all around us, so if we do a quick scan for crude oil, and we zoom in, we can see there's a normal node there. There are pure nodes over here, and there's a normal and pure up here as well. Oh no, too pure. I apologize. I clearly do not know the game very well. Anyway, we don't need any of them because we're just setting up a very small amount right now and power is going to get a little tight with the copper facility, so I don't want to overbuild. Plus, it's just we just need a little bit for now. When we build a dedicated oil refinery, that's when we'll use everything. Right, so let's start off with a little foundation. Maybe five or six across and we'll go out to, yeah, let's just go out to whatever we can. Ten, we'll chop away what we don't need. All right, just like that, no blueprint needed. So, let's get started. We'll build a lookout tower, perhaps, and get some bird's eye view of this area. And we can talk through the rest of our, our to-do list as well. Actually, I feel like I'll just stay on topic with this until we get moving. But um, yeah, so rubber and plastic is effectively what we need. So what we need for that is three refineries. If we build one just maybe on the edge of that foundation there. In fact, actually, sorry, we'll come a bit closer right next to the actual deposit itself. And we'll just put them next to each other by holding control. And then the third one will actually reverse its direction. And pop it in like that. So what we're gonna do is go with plastic on this one. So it's gonna receive 30 crude oil per minute and put out 20 plastic per minute. And the first time we've ever had to deal with a byproduct, 10 heavy oil residue per minute. This one is gonna then do rubber. Just regular rubber here. It's going to take in 30. So that's using the full 60 we have, 30 and 30. And we're going to also put out 20 rubber, just like 20 plastic. But this one's going to put out a little bit more heavy oil residue, 20. So we'll be left over with 30, whole, uh, 30 heavy oil residue in total if we combine the pipes, which we will. Right, so let's just line this up, make sure it's correct amount. And uh, I guess we'll put it in the middle of the foundation just to be nice. Do a similar thing with this one, and then very sim simply just connect them into their little buddies and make them friends. There we go. They're best friends now. Right, so that's that. Easy as that. Uh, they actually don't have any 
like uh, regular material input, just the liquid input, so no big deal. Over on this side, we're going to have the output then of plastic and heavy oil, so two outputs. But again, we will just get the first one rolling first, so maybe... Oh, sorry, the liquid rolling first, so heavy oil to come out first, and then we'll do the actual material resource that can go over it. Alright, so they're connected together for a pipeline of 30 heavy oil residue. Now, in this refinery, we have a few different recipes that can actually use heavy oil. Uh, one of them would be residual fuel. So you'll notice that these products, these oil recipes, have residuals to them. So you have plastic and then residual plastic. And this means that it takes in some of the byproducts from one, mixes it with something else, and you still get the same, you know, material good at the end. I was going to say output, but it's obviously a different rate, but, you know, you get the same actual product. Same for uh, rubber, you know, you can pop in resin, mix it with water, you get out rubber. Uh, the best one, or early on at least, is probably residual fuel. You know, you throw in a little heavy oil, and then you're getting some fuel out. Now, we don't have fuel generators yet, and we don't have a packager yet, so there's really nothing we can use fuel for other than just storing it up. So what I'm going to do instead is go with petroleum coke, which uses 40 heavy oil residue per minute. Now, we need to get this down to 30, um, so we need 75% of this, right? 75. There we go. So that's 30 per minute, and it's going to put out 90 petroleum coke per minute. So we don't need petroleum coke for anything. I think I used it in a build in my previous series towards the end for fused frames. I can't remember exactly where in that production chain it fit, but it was something like 2400 petroleum coke per minute. It was pretty high volume stuff. Um, but on its own, it doesn't really do much, and um, can't be used for very much, I think, as a base resource. You have to get some alternate recipes to really make use of it. And you can sink it in an awesome sink, which is what we're going to do to keep these machines running. But I don't think it's going to give us very much. Sorry, that wasn't lined up properly, so we'll just make sure that's good. And that back in, and that. Alright, so that's that sorted. They, this doesn't have a material input either, it's just heavy oil residue, so... Just realized my microphone isn't quite where it should be. Hopefully it's a bit better now. Alright, just chopping away some of that concrete to get some back, and we're going to build out a little further here and put in an awesome sink so we can deal with that petroleum coke that's coming out. Yes, it's going to be 90 per minute, so we'll need a Mark II belt, I guess, to take this out. And just I'm just going to send it straight into an awesome sink. We're going to leave it a bit of distance, though, because other things are going to go in here, too. How are we looking? We'll shift that over a bit. That's the line I wanted. All right, a Mark II belt going straight in there. See you later. All good. Now, we actually need to handle the stuff we do want, which is the rubber and plastic. So, quite simply, we have two outputs here for each of these. We'll just go with our industrial storage containers. So, again, just to get some decent lineup here. About there. And here, I think. And then I guess we'll use a lift, right? So, flip that around. So, 20 per minute. So, Mark 1 belt is totally suitable. Alright, that's both of those outputs done. So, again, just three refineries. Two outputs each. The only thing would be that these two have their heavy oil feed into that one, so that we're just using everything all the time. Now, what happens when these get filled up? Well, we've got smart splitters for that, don't we? So what we could do, I guess, is somewhere in the center here, if we put in a merger and we send it out to the right, and then we go up, and we send the output away from me. So forget that one in the middle, it's not needed, it's just temporary. Now what we can do is connect this out to this in. Right, so we're coming down and around like that. And then we just simply get a splitter. Holding control will snap it onto this line. Snap that onto that line. Send that in there. Send that in there. Now a splitter would just split the output. So that would be 10 going into our box and 10 going down. But we don't want that. We want to actually send the overflow. So we'll just grab a smart splitter, and if we hold control, we can just replace the one that was on that spot. So that's a new feature in this update, so that's really nice. Now over on the right side, we'll say that it's overflow, and in the center, any is fine, right? It's whatever, it's only gonna be one thing. So we'll do a similar thing for here, but we'll have to just upgrade it first. So holding control, left output is gonna be overflow, and that's gonna be any. 
So now we've got our overflow going into a merger and going down. And then coming out this way, right? So we'll just send this then around. And into that awesome sink. The same awesome sink. So that way we only have to build one. Save a little bit of power. Right, so we get a merger. And if we want to actually make sure it lines up. So just as an example. I can't hold control to get onto the grid here. You'll notice that's just free placing it. But if you want to snap onto something, putting one in front of it. And then holding control allows you to snap. So that's always a good way to orient orientate things. Alright, and that's going in. So that's going to be a total of 40, traveling along a belt of 60. That's if both containers fill up. And we'll just make this a Mark III, just in case it needs to handle 90 plus the 40 coming out. Uh, which will go over just slightly. Alright, so now we just need to power it and watch it all come on. So we've got power running in here. Don't worry about that. <laughs> that thing. Actually, I just realized something. Do I have what I need? I do, actually. Um, if we open up the MAM, we go down to the Deuterium chain. Here we've got Mark II power poles, so 300 quick wire. And this will allow us for more connections than four. I can't remember what's required actually building it. Is it just quick wire? Let's see. So we've now got power pole Mark II. Yeah, it's quick wire instead of regular wire. So we could upgrade this. Bonk. And then have just wires going everywhere, which I know people just love. So we'll do that. They're all hooked up, and now the oil is too. Alright, so just to go over the chain one last time before we leave it. That's 60 crude oil per minute for a 40 megawatt power consumption. Traveling along our pipes now. Being divided and going into two different machines. Each receiving, or looking to receive, 30 per minute. Each one is producing 20 plastic and 20 rubber, and also 10 heavy oil and 20 heavy oil, respectively. Those pipes combine as outputs out here, and move back around into a third refinery here, where 30, because we've underclocked it to 75, 30 is consumed to produce 90 petroleum coke per minute. The actual 20 and 20 that comes out should be flowing along just fine. That's our first batch of rubber and our first batch of plastic. And unless I've made a big mistake, no, there we go. It's flowing straight into their containers. Totally fine. We'll come back for this <clears throat> Excuse me, we'll come back to this area a little later. Now, when they do inevitably get backed up, they'll be fed into this merger thanks to the smart splitter outputs. Come down the Mark 1 belt or lift and flow along out this way into the awesome sink. And we can see our first batches of petroleum coke flying along now and going into the awesome sink. So there we go. That is a simple oil production chain. Very simple. Next, we're going to do AI limiters. So as I move up to my vehicle, uh, we can talk through the reasoning for doing this, right? So why are we doing AI limiters? God, it's, it's going to be so loud in here. How good is that though, huh? Love to see it. Can't wait to get Mark II pipes or pumps though, so we only have to put them at the bottom. Anyways, so AI limiters, what we'll need that for is the MAM. The MAM has a need for 50, I think, to get power switches. So we want power switches for our factory. And we also want to be able to make more smart splitters without having to craft them every time. So just automating some AI limiters in the background, even just to make, I say automating, semi-automating. We're going to feed uh, containers and just let it crank out like a couple hundred of them or something. So we have plenty for the future. Then we're actually going to go into the build itself and get building walkways, towers, staircases, that kind of thing so we can get around our build a bit quicker. And then also build something I've dubbed as glass cases. Now glass cases are what we're... The, I talked, touched on it briefly in the previous episode. I think I kept it in. It's basically a way to, for us to see our belts traveling from floor to floor and have it look neat and cool. Then we're going to do the actual logistics. Copper inputs, copper outputs, just for the copper. The Caterium outputs and stuff, we're going to leave till the next episode. So this will be done over three episodes, not two. We'll power everything on in the next one. Because um, there's actually just, turns out there's a lot more to it. <laughs> and then finally, we'll do the pipe logistics. And that's why I wanted to get the valves and the rubber ready so we could build valves. So pipe logistics and then water extraction. So just one thing I wanted to show you guys, might take, I might speed this up as we get over to it, was the view of this build from the distance. Oh, and actually, it's worth mentioning, I streamed, so I, I couldn't get an epi the episode together in time, so I decided to stream instead. And uh, 
on the streams, don't worry, I don't do anything that you'd miss in the videos, and that's why I actually don't add them to the playlist. But the streams are for cosmetics, so I went into the steel factory here, and I added some windows, I painted the place, and we went around and found some hard drives and things like that, so... No gameplay changes, really. We didn't build anything, I don't think. It was just really updating some of the cosmetics and the look and feel of the place. Now, since then, I've actually even changed the roads slightly as well. But check it out. In the very distance, we can actually see the copper and Caterium factory and how it's going to loom over the horizon once it actually finally gets built. I've gone as... It's like um, the half-constructed Death Star or something at the moment. Yeah, that's right. I'm a nerd. I'm a gamer. I have references. And uh, effectively... You know, I couldn't finish the floors yet. Just don't have the material. Steel is really the limiting factor. Concrete, I've set up some extra concrete production. That is one thing we did during the stream, actually, was I went out and just tapped two, three extra nodes here for concrete. Uh, so it's just, you know, concrete miner, sorry, Mark II miner with three constructors, I think, making, turning the limestone into concrete. That's basically it. Right, just really quickly, I wanted to touch on something. I've climbed up a power tower here, and I want to look back at the roads. Now, I know it's only a small percentage of people that are literally following along and building, as I am. But I just need to mention this. You do not need to build the exact same road layout I do. These are modular blueprints. The roads are malleable. You can remove segments and pop them in, make turns, remove them, all of that. The reason that I made those blueprints so dynamic was so that we can change the roads pretty much every episode. And that's what I'm probably going to do. So this ramp wasn't there before, this road wasn't there before, it might not be there next episode. All that really matters is the entrance and exits of factories, and how you get there is really up to you. This isn't the most efficient road layout, it's not even final, it could change. So I'm just putting that out there, that you a lot of people keep asking for the exact road layout. Now I put out my save file, so you could just copy it that way if you wanted to anyway. But I'm just saying it does not matter because it's not final. When I build the transport hub, the road network will be pretty final. So you could maybe copy that, I guess, if you wanted to have the journey times of your tractors and trucks be as similar to mine as possible. But at the moment, it really, really shouldn't make a difference. All right, so we're at the build now. So like I said, just temporarily, we're going to set up a little AI limiter production chain. So we'll just make an assembler somewhere like here. Make a couple of industrial storage containers, or maybe just... No, I've got what I need. So maybe one there, and one just over to the side. Alright, now we'll just feed these in. And we'll just grab power. So there's a power tower over there. I'll just see if I can connect that up. Alright, so that should be power over to our assembler. So what we're going to need is a bunch of copper sheets and then some quick wire. Now I've left more quick wire down at my little storage area here. I think. Depends which one has it. No, maybe not. Oh yeah, there we go. There's a little bit more in here. Alright, so just going to fill up those containers and let AI limiters get produced in the background. I guess we also need a container at the front of it, right? So we can store some of these and we're in no hurry I don't have power shards with me I think they're back down there but it's all good all right so that's quick wire in and copper sheets in I'm just gonna take some of those back because we're gonna need them so copper sheets quick wire rolling in it's gonna have to be a mark two belt because even by standard it requires 100 per minute that's 25 per minute not that it matters too much it's a finite amount going in and then we should have a bunch of AI limiters at the back by the end. Super simple. All right, we'll mark that one off. Oops. So the next thing is going to be doing the walkway towers. So I'm just going to see if I have what I need blueprint-wise, and then we'll, re we'll resume. All right, so I think I've got everything I need. So I'm up on the refinement floor, where there's going to be over 400 <laughs> refineries in the future. Of course, you don't have to add in all these right now. We're not even going to be able to power on, like, even a third of them, I think, so far. But just to refresh people's memory for the layout, each of these kind of blocks here, these segments I'm driving over, that are broken up between the blackened foundations. The blackened foundations are for walkways. This is where polished concrete's gonna go in the future, or coated concrete as it's called in the game. We can actually use some of that, thinking about it, the plastic that we've made to coat the concrete, maybe in the next episode so we can get that nice sheen to it. 
and I can uh, drive around now, then hopefully it won't put any scuff marks on it. Anyways, um, so yeah, these blocks here are 18 by 7 that sit inside of the walkways. 18 by 7 that can house 26 refineries each. That's 13 refineries in a row, and then another 13 behind them. With all their floor holes and everything sinking into the ground, the logistics floor down below. So, what we're focusing on today really is the copper side of things. That's the caterium side of things, although there will be copper sheets a little further out towards the truck stations. But on this side, it's all just copper. There's 14 of these segments in total. Okay, so 14 of these segments, each one with 26 machines. It's a lot of refineries. Now, I haven't put all the refineries down yet. That's why some of them are just shortened. Um because I worked from the inside out and I wanted to put some in every block just to kind of gauge the spacing and see how everything was coming together. So I'm pretty happy with it, but it does mean all this extra white space here is gonna be filled with refineries in the future. Now you'll notice there's red spots now and there's also yellow spots. So the red markings are for towers. That's what we're gonna be doing next. It's the next thing up on the to-do list, building out these towers. And the yellow markings are for the glass cases where we'll see the copper from these machines traveling up to the floors above us. Now the floor above me is ventilation, the one above that is logistics 2, and the one above that is assembly. That's as high as the build goes. This is refinement. Then we have ventilation, logistics, and assembly. Now of course, because everything is going down the floors below, we don't get to see any of the belts. We don't get to see all of our copper ingots flowing and all the different things we're going to make. So that's why we've got these things here, or they will be here, glass cases that will rise forth showing all our material going up to the floor above us. So we'll get to that in the future. That'll be the next thing after we do these towers. But let's show off doing one of these tower blocks. So, to start this, you can see that my towers are always three by three with a staircase rolling around kind of circularly all the way up and up and up with a gap in between for hypertubes or for material to travel up and down depending on what I'm doing. So I've marked it with red paint so we know exactly where it is. We're going to fall all the way down to sea level, and I'm just going to go out towards the dam area there. Now, at a certain point, we'll be able to stand on this water. It'll be like, you know, waist high, basically. All right, so as we get close to the edge of the dam, and I've extended the dam out further, but it's all waist high. You know, you can walk in it around this area. Just grab a foundation anywhere, and as long as you're able to step in the water, hold control to lock onto the world grid with a two meter foundation and we'll drag out. I'm gonna drag it all the way over to that corner area. This is just to get the overall idea of where the floor needs to go in. Right, so we're sitting underneath the corner. We're standing on some foundations that are level with where we wanna be in the future. Of, of course, like I said, this doesn't matter. This will re be removed and lined in the future. But for now, we wanna just build our first tower. It's best to do it from the bottom up, though you can do it from the top down. It can just be a little bit more finicky. So this foundation here, is aligned with that one. This one here, if we look straight up, aligned with that one. And this one is gonna be our sort of center point. So we know that as a center point, we can come out and around. So it's a three by three in total. And just to super denote that, that is it, right? That grid lines up with that right there. All right, so all good. So this will be a walkway in the future of some sort that will guide us between the water extractors. There actually won't be that many water extractors considering the floor space of this area, but anyways. All right, so I've got some blueprints for you. Again, these are all available on whatdarrenplays.com slash satisfactory. I don't ask for anything in return other than perhaps a like on the video, perhaps the odd forum post, Reddit post, whatever. If you enjoy the videos, just tell somebody. That's all I ask. <laughs> But hey, it is Christmas. As I've said before, channel memberships go a long way too. But anyways, I digress. Either way, you can have them for free. So, um, right, let's get started. Very simple blueprint, actually. So what we have here is a tower wall, concrete glass, a tower wall, and a tower stairs. You'll notice that my tower is being 3x3 three three normally. We've got a big open gap here. So I thought it'd be nice to design some that actually use windows to go out around the edge. So if we just lock that in place for a second, it's basically just a series of walls in a 3x3 three three fashion with windows on one corner. So we obviously want to rotate that corner away from us to aim out, just lock that in place, to aim out towards that corner piece that's kind of missing. So that should be good. We'll got, this will guide us all the way up, I think. So we just lock that in. Yep. And then we go blueprint mode. We'll rotate it around. And we just keep going up. 
How good is that? I got some flickering, but that's just the game. Alright, cool. So there we go. So now we'll just cut a hole here. And that's basically what we've got. We'll get some distance on it when we build all the way up. So we have to go all the way up to the very, very top. So to guide us up to the next floor, which is there, we'll use our staircase, right? So we have tower stairs, a small set of corner stairs designed for use inside of the tower case. Now, because this is blueprint mode and we're inside a blueprint, it's a little finicky. So we'll just switch it to default mode. Now, why didn't I just bake this into the blueprint? It's because the floors of this build are of different heights. So we might have to edit it on the way up. So we'll just put in our first segment here. I always start one foundation in, aligned with the corners, and then ups, ups we go. So we'll just run up that. We'll look at the wall and then bring this down. Lock it in place by pressing H or whatever your hotkey of choice is. Click. Up again we go. And we'll just keep doing the same until we get to a point where we have to figure something out. So it looks like this one actually looks like it's in line. That's total coincidence if that's the case. I mean, it's not coincidence. Super well thought out builds by Watt Darren Plays because I'm a genius. All right. So, yeah, we're in line with that. So that's all well and good. So this is a logistical floor. Uh, we can't walk out that way, so we'll have to extend our catwalk crossing over. And seeing as we're higher than the kind of build now itself, we'll grab the tower wall concrete glass. We'll turn back on blueprint mode. Uh, I might have to just step away for a second. We look at the actual blueprint itself. Rotate. Lock it in. Commit. Can we do the same again up above? And can we go up even higher? Yes, we can. All right, pretty happy with that. So again, we'll just create a doorway somewhere in the center. Central doorways are usually pretty good. We can always move them if we want to. And we'll leave this as a bit of a platform. So I'll remove this and remove this. And we'll extend this one across instead. By the way, if you're noticing my hologram color be orange sometimes, like it was a second ago, Probably can't make that happen now. Red hologram means for me can't be placed. Orange means it can, but it's clipping something. It used to be yellow. I changed it just before this video uh, because yellow is just a little bit too bright. Sometimes you just couldn't quite see which angle. It'll make a lot of sense when we show some of the other blueprints because I was tr struggling to see how they were aligned. Darkening it a bit by making it orange uh, basically fix it. You can do that in the settings and user interface. There's colors to pick. You can choose whatever color you want. All right, so let's grab this staircase again. The next wall height or floor height is roughly there. So we'll grab this. We'll turn it to default mode. Look at the wall. Come down. That should be in line. If we're not sure, just move it out. And if you can see the rails, it's too far over. If you can't see the rails, it's in embedded in the wall, and that's basically where we want it to be. And it's not extending through the glass. And the rails don't poke through, so it's all good. Now you could also put a doorway somewhere like there. You could even have one maybe. Eh, you can't really have one in the back, actually. That would be a bit awkward. Now the central sp spiral is reserved usually for a glass case as well. I don't always do it. That's why I've left it blank. But if I do, I'll put a hypertube in it or it'll be some sort of material that moves up and down between the two. All right, we'll just keep going. So the next one, this is why we don't bake it in. It's an irregular height. It's not going to be two staircases up. It looks like it's only going to be one. So we'll just go like that. And like that. <clears throat> Grab our catwalk crossing and extend it over. So this is our next floor. This is refinement. All right, there we are. It's as easy as that. How good is that? Um, so yeah, we do the same with this. Remove This floor doesn't need to be here anymore. Nor does that. I just extend that across all the way. And then we start the whole process again until we reach the next floor, which is all the way up there. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I said, this should be the top floor. I don't think we're going any higher than this. We'll find out in the next episode, but I'm pretty sure this is the top floor. And then this logistical floor down here is going to handle the output of all the specialized goods we make, like wire, AI limiters, all that kind of stuff. That will be down on this floor. Now we have to find a way for it to get out. So... I'm thinking, though I haven't finalized where it's going to go yet, somewhere here is going to be either a train station or another series of truck stations. Probably truck stations, actually, that will receive the material from that floor. So it could be, like, quite high up off the ground, then a road can carry it down. Uh, so we'll have to see. But there you go. That's what we got. Now, you may notice there's some irregularly painted stairs in there. If you are using my blueprints and you want to use the exact same colors, 
I do provide the colors online in the same document folder where everything is. It's in the blueprints folder and it's called like color for blueprints or something. So all of my preset colors that I've saved here can be grabbed there and you can pop in the hex values yourself. Doing that, let's grab the, so I use dark gray and copper teal and that's basically my paint job for the staircases and some of the trimmings of this place. Alright, so I created three tower blocks, one in the center that's just pure concrete. Now I might put some windows in that in the future, but then we have the ones on each edge, which have the windows going all around. Still need to do some of the painting, I guess, as well. Um, but yep, they both come down to the very bottom, and I just have concrete connecting them. Again, temporary. I don't know where the walkways are actually going to go down here just yet. But once I do, the floor plan, of course, will be updated for those who are following along. Uh, but yeah, just in the interest of time, there's going to be these things on every, pretty much on all these, like, little corners that we have in the distance here. So let me just see if I can zoom in a bit. That corner there, you know, I think that one there, this one here, they'll have those towers as well. Just so there's lots of places for us to get up and down without having to run too far, if we wanted to. And it'll just break the build up as well from being a giant rectangle and make it look a bit nicer. Just in the interest of time, I'm just going to move on to the next thing now. So we'll just mark that one off. That's walkway towers. And in between episodes, I can put down the rest of those towers now that we've seen how they're done. The next one is going to be glass cases. So I'm going to have to go up, drive back to get some extra materials, and then we can start doing that. Alright, so I've got all the material I need to create a glass case of emotion, so let's begin. So we have a 5x2 little section created for us here. So it being 5x2, it had to be divided across two different blueprints. So I've got glass case side A and side B, and it says for use with each other and for use in the copper Caterium factory. So we'll just chop away this little bit first, and then I'll talk through the design of it and also the need for it and why it is the way it is, basically. All right, so we'll just grab either section first. We'll just start with A, why not? It makes the most sense. And what we're gonna be doing with this, as you can see, it's quite a tall thing. So we'll have to switch it, switch off blueprint mode because a lot of these foundations were built with blueprints in mind. And once we lock this one in, we can snap onto that. Now, what we're gonna be doing is aiming at the most bottom point of this foundation, right? Any bottom point we can, and then we can just nudge it over into position. All right, so last case side A. We'll just keep aiming down and down until we can't aim down any further, which is about there. We want to rotate it so that the arrow is pointing away from me, actually, at least in this orientation, because we want these metal pillars to be on the edge. There's no metal pillar on this side, and that's because it's waiting for the snap point of the other glass case to snap onto it. This is like the edge, so we bring that edge all the way over here. Now we just want to make sure that we're in line here. No, we're not. There we go. So that should be good. Let's lock it in. There she is. All right, so that's our first two thirds. It's not quite a half, right? Because it's five foundations. So this one has three, the other one will have two. Uh, and as you can see, it's very simply just conveyor lifts that go all the way up with some metal pillars to act as a sort of support for them. And also so that we just see one side rising up. It can look a bit weird from, if you don't have that, you see both sides kind of behind each other, bit weird. Anyway, then we have our floor holes and we have some strip lighting. I'll show the lighting off in a middle and we also have a uh, minute and we also have the metal beams to kind of hide away that strip lighting. So the lighting can be seen if you're looking at the other side, I guess. It should cause a nice reflection up to the inside. So let's just go blueprint mode. We'll grab this. We'll open up our radial wheel, select side B. Blueprint mode is turned on. And uh, we want those metal pillars facing out. So there we go. So there's one and there's another. So they're on the edges. Just make sure that that's nudged in nicely and this should be as well but just to be sure yep all right lock it in now while we're waiting to get the full effect we'll turn on global illumination and then we should see the true vision of this now i like to think we'll add enough lighting to this build in future that global illumination can be used while we walk around it so we'll have to add some lights onto the ceiling i was thinking very very faint teal colored lights just like our actual machines but a bit more skewed towards white so a very bright like teal and that should hopefully accentuate this area quite nicely you know so the reason i've chosen this kind of copperish orangey bronzy color is because as the belts are flowing upwards they should bounce and reflect off the copper ingots quite nicely i haven't actually seen that but i think it'll look good i hope um and i really like the look of this i'm very happy with it global illumination does all the heavy lifting now i think i might have to add one extra part of the build we need a metal beam to travel along from here to there 
I used to have strip lighting on that side as well, but it didn't really seem to make much sense, and it was kind of messing with the lighting in here, so I decided to remove it. But what do you think of them apples? Pretty nice, huh? Remember again, all these blueprints are available in the description, whatdarrenplays.com slash satisfactory. Would appreciate any support you can throw my way, but no worries otherwise. And I'm just meaning a share, a like, comment, hopping into my Discord. And if you want to go the extra mile, obviously that option is there too, a channel memberships and the like, but I digress. Anyway, so there we go. So that's our first glass case of emotions. All my emotions are going to be traveling up. And now this remains, the, it, it begs the question, why eight? Why is there eight? Why are they positioned where they are? What's the deal, huh? So, in order to explain this, we have to kind of hop out here for a minute and talk it through. And by the way, I have tested it in a vacuum. Uh, the floor holes should work just fine and everything, so it should be okay. Let's just go out here for a second. It's going to create a little area. And then I've got a blueprint with information, the layout signs. So, aim this away from me. And this will basically allow me to describe the build. Oh yeah, I forgot. It's just quite funny seeing it. So, if you recall, the, um... Well, basically, each block, or each segment that sits, that houses 26 machines, is now corresponding to a letter. I tried different le lettering patterns, actually, but I decided this one's probably best. Uh, for reasons I won't really bore you with, but... I did think, like, A, B, C, D, E, F, or I thought, like, well, what if we want to add more machines on in this way? It's a whole thing. I think in future, if we were ever to add more on, it would go out that way. Uh, so you can actually go pretty far out to the west. So I would just add more layers on that way rather than adding, you know, further in north, if that makes sense. Anyway, so this is the layout from a top-down perspective of the build that's behind me. Not including the Caterium and the truck stations and all that. That would go off, you know, here. So hopefully we're orientated and we understand. So, before, I was saying, I'm not sure how to name these machines or number them. We can't fit three numbers, three digits on these signs. And, uh, to be honest, the signs are completely pointless anyway, but... Because, uh, they're all going to be doing the same thing, effectively. But still, it's just kind of cool to do it for immersion's sake. A little tedious to put in the numbers, I agree. But, anyways, the solution to that is just to group the machines by block. So, each block or each segment it now has a corresponding letter. And we'll see that with overhanging signs. So in the future, not right now, but in the future, we'll just pull this down from the roof, have a big sign that says this is block A, that's block B, etc., etc., right? So we'll know where we are. So A, B, C, D, etc., etc. So the outputs of these machines. This is a forward planned build. So just bear with me for a minute because I'm going to go on a little rant. Not a rant, but, you know, explain some stuff. But skip ahead if you feel like you know this stuff already. So effectively, this is a forward planned build. A lot of people say, like, why are you doing this? It's so complicated, so big. What's the point? This is so early to be building a factory with 400 refineries. Why would you do that? And do you really need 12,000 copper ingots per minute? The answer is that I'm trying with this. I know it's intimidating up front to have to go through such a big build. I do get that, and it can be a little monotonous to have to put down things over and over again, even using blueprints, although that does save tremendous amounts of time. But there is reasoning behind it. The reason I'm deciding to build big now is so that we don't have to come back to it in future. Now, there's two reasons for that. One is that just on the YouTube side of things, saying that we're building a big copper factory can bring everyone towards looking at that factory, that particular build. If I was to then do it again and again, several times apart, I just feel like that doesn't hit as much. I could be wrong, but that's just one reason. The other reason is something that I saw a lot in my previous series, and I get a lot of comments from people saying, I get burnt out in the game. And it's how I started my series. Remember in episode one, I talked about burnout, because I started over too, for a different reason really, but same overall feeling, which was burnt out. And uh, one of the things a lot of people say about burnout is that they build Lots of factories, and maybe they're a little messy, just a little bit, a bit messy, or very messy. But, you know, some people are, like, organized, but they're like, eh, it's a bit messy. And they get things done, and then they move on, and they build some other factories. So, fair enough. But then where the burnout creeps in is when you get to the next milestone, and it says, like, let's say you already have a copper factory, and you're making a thousand. And then now you need, basically, another thousand for some other project. And you have to go out and source your copper, or go back and change the original build. And a lot of people seem to burn out of the game when they realize they have to go back to the work they've done already and change it. Or 
go back to the work they've done already and duplicate it because they need more of the thing that they are run short on. So this playthrough aims to sacrifice the time up front to build big so that later on when we need more copper it's only a matter of turning on the machines or upgrading the belts. Never tried that before, don't know anyone else that's doing that, it's an experiment, can't say it's efficient or the best way to do things, but since I've had that kind of turn on in my brain, I feel like a lot of my factories are going to be done this way. Now not everything, will, the iron factory will probably be a bit more modular and smaller and catered to our needs more immediately, but this just seemed like for copper it's like this is one and done. We should never have to come back to do copper again for a very long time. Because it's 12,000 ingots per minute. And there's a lot left over. We'll make a bunch of goods, but we'll have lots of ingots free to do other things with. So that's the idea. I just wanted to take a moment to explain that. Sorry I didn't move around and do anything in that time. But I just thought it's worth mentioning that this is a forward planned build using numbers from end game materials and things. So it's like a belt of 780 is the max belt we can get out of here. So, let's take a look at the numbers now. 37.5 per minute is what we get out of each machine. There's 26 in each block. So 26 times 37.5 is 975. That's too much. We can't fit that on any belt we have. If we were to bring it all to one belt. Now, they're broken into rows. Right? Rows of 13. So that's 487.5. So we get two belts out of each block, right? One belt from this row and one belt from this row. This is block A, yeah? That's block B, and so on and so forth. So, here in the center is each of our floor holes. Remember, our glass cases have eight floor holes. So, A is going to send two of its belts into each floor hole here, right? So, one belt into the top right A, and another belt into the top right but down one A. And so on and so forth. So, that's how these are going to be divided up. So, that's why there's eight. There's eight because one belt goes into this one, one belt goes into this one. I should just do that. Uh, from this row, it's going to go into like this one, and from this row, it's going to go into this one. So that's all going to be handled downstairs uh, in how we divide up those belts, but that's the idea. So similarly, because it's offset, it's a little awkward, we'll have to drag a belt down here and then feed it up through here. Same with that row, same with that row, same with that row. But then it becomes a little bit more in, in line as we go further down. And we've got another glass case here. So let's build another one. And then we can refer, refer, use our reference image and look back at it again. See how we're getting on. Um, so yeah, So but at least now with blueprints, it's super easy to build this. And then that, the downstairs, we've got some, also have some, uh, what's it called? Blueprints to help us out with lining up the belts and stuff, because that can be tricky too. All right, so we got one, two, three, and we'll just check on this side. It seems like we're always one in on that side. Lock that in. Is that correct? We have our two metal pillars, and we just bring it across two. So we'll make sure. Yep. That's as easy as that. I mean, that's pretty quick. <laughs> So it's not too bad. And it should look good, I think, as well. And now we have some of our, you know, our towers in the center as well for us to get up and down. And there's two more glass case things that have to be done over here. Let's just do those again real quickly as well. So I'll just do that last one on my own. I wanted just to do these at least three so we could go downstairs and see. So now that we've got our tower, and again, we might put some hex windows or something in this just to make it look a bit nicer. But just for now, we'll just hop downstairs. Right, so we can actually see, I painted the ground here as well to refer to up above us now, which has the floor holes in position. So we know, again, just by following that sign, that the these are the outputs, right? Those ones, the singles are the outputs. The ones with uh, pipelines next to them are the inputs. So inputs, inputs on the inside, outputs, outputs on the outside. So we know that this line needs to meet uh, here. This line needs to meet here, this line needs to meet here, and that line needs to meet there. And then we can, it's all just in service of trying to make it look nice as it goes, goes upstairs. But ultimately we have to bring it upstairs somehow, so we might as well try and make it look good. Alright, I'm just going to pull that sign down. 
I, was, I should have just ran upstairs thinking about it, but I was like, oh, I'll bring the sign down to me. Um, but yeah, if we just rotate that again. It's nice that it retains all the info. So I would say it's not perfect, because actually I ended right before where it's going to be not perfect. You can see that there's, you know, eight here, there's eight there, there's eight there, and there's only four here. Because the remaining blocks are not going to be full capacity. That's something we'll talk about later. Oh, just very quickly while we're here, we can see how much we have left. Yeah, 140 um, AI limiters is what we made. So we'll just take 100, keep that in my inventory for now. Leave that here for a bit. We'll get back to it. All right, let's work out the logistical split. So effectively, we have five truck stations down there, four of which are going to be handling copper ore coming into the factory, and one of which will be doing Caterium. Now, we don't have to worry about the Caterium one today. We'll worry about that in the next video, and it should be easier to worry about as well as the machines for that are further down towards the truck stations, which is why we're doing the copper one first, as it's more complicated and further away. So, we have our various blocks outlined as mentioned, and we have to divide up the various belts coming out of these between all of the blocks that we have. So, four truck stations, eight outputs. Most of the outputs are going to be at 780, and the remaining one or two at the end won't be. And that's okay. Uh, so, how we divide that up then between each block. So, every block has 26 machines, and each one is consuming 15 copper. That's 390. That's each individual, individual block. If we have two blocks together, it's 780. So, that means that our belt needs to... Every belt that we make splits between two blocks. So we go to blueprints, we open up our refinery, sorry, not that one, we open up the stacked belts, right? So these are eight belts. This would be the belts that are traveling out of the truck stations. Now we can actually open up another variant of that, the one that says signed. It's not that I've signed it, it's that they have little signs on the sides that tell us which grouping everything is going to. So because one belt feeds two groups, that means we have here A and B, C and D, E and F and G. And on this side, H and I, J and K, L and M and N. So remember, it's just one belt for two groups. Now at the moment, we're only doing 270 on a belt. So I don't know, can we do some quick math? 270 divided by 780 times 100. We're running the place at 34% of its potential because we don't have the technology yet to ramp up the belt speed. Now, when we get to the next tier, tier four, mark four belts, we'll be running at 480, I think. So we'll be at 61%, so we'll have a pretty big jump. And then the jump after that is just to get to 780, right? Which would be 100%. All right, so there we go. So that's kind of the overall idea. Now we'll map that out in a moment, but we can actually start with the uh, feeding these machines. Again, blueprints are your friend. But you'll only, only if you followed how we laid them out in the first place. So we've got the CC Refinery Logistics 8 meters, 6 meters, 4 meters, and 2. So the difference between these is their height, right? So we can just see here 8, 6, 4, and 2. And that's because we have these belts that can go over each other. And we want to avoid them passing through each other, right? We want to keep everything separate. Have things make sense you can do it obviously that's called spaghettification basically it's uh well it's just called spaghetti belts it's not really spaghettification that is when you go into a black hole <laughs> but anyways um yeah so having these belts stacked like this means that knowing where they're going to go we needed to decide the height that we're going to lay out the logistics for each block all right so we just saw if we have a look at that signed one again just one more time We can see here, this is two meters off the ground. This is four meters off the ground. This is six, and this is eight. I just know that. Every, uh, as a tip, every splitter is two meters tall. So the further up you go, it, it might look like it's a little off, but it isn't, trust me. I thought that too. But uh, yeah, so this will fit into, that's like zero, that's two, that's four, that's six, and that's eight. So we don't have one on the bottom. We just have the ones up above. The reason we don't have one on the bottom is because our pipes are going to be flowing on the bottom. So that's why not. Right, so I've already written it down on a notepad, but A and B are going to go to 2 meters. And H and I are also going to do, go to 2 meters. H and I are over there. And A and B are here and here. So that's kind of how we work it out. 
All right, let's get rid of this now. It might sound complicated. Hopefully it doesn't have uh, made it sound too complicated, but the basic whole summary of this is we have different heights of these belts. Uh, and we need to use the correct one based on which group we're dealing with. Right, so we're dealing with group A, so we'll start with the two meter one. All right, so in order to line this up, we can see rather nicely that the um, pipelines are at the cross section of four foundations. So we just line those up together. So we could just use this to push our pipeline joint thing. Ah, oh, I can't get any further. So we'll just move this a bit further over. About there. Yep, so that's all good. Ah, facing the wrong way. So they're all receiving, I should have mentioned that, they're all gonna be receiving their inputs from this big bus, as it were, right? So this big line here going down this way, that's where they all receive their stuff from. Uh, we're going to have to just move around the um, <laughs> the big tower that's there. I could remove that tower, but I feel like it's important to have one in the center of the factory. But anyways. Uh, right, so that's where we're going to go. And then we just need to make sure that's lined up here. Just move that over. And that's really it. So we know the height of the blueprint that ne is needed. It's two meters. And we have the placement aligned. Now, to keep doing that, we just press R to go into blueprint mode. We'll rotate it the same way. So we have our directional arrow, which helps us. So things are flowing out that way. And then we just move this over one, two, and three. It's three. And you can just see to line it up with the ceiling above, right? And then just keep doing that. One, two, three. One, two, three. This one only needs a little bit on the end, but we can still do it. One, two, three. Okay, so that's a nice way of getting everything lined up without having to manually do it. And blow my brains out. Uh, so we can cut these off now. We don't need these last little bits here. And that's really the end point there as well. So we'll just get rid of those. Oh, did I get rid of that belt by accident or was it just not there? Oh yeah, it just wasn't there. All right, yeah, so we'll just connect those belts back in. Wherever there's gaps. Okay, so the next thing then would be um, bringing down all of the conveyor lifts. So they just should just snap in pretty nicely. Mark 1 belts is all that's ever going to be needed because it's only receiving 15 per minute. All right, there we have it. So that's all of block A, completely hooked up and ready to go in terms of copper ore. Of course, we'll do the piping and stuff like that a little bit later, and then we have to do the outputs in just a moment as well. All right, so what we need to do next, before I suppose we start adding more blocks, is I'm gonna start building out the uh, conveyor belts all the way over there. So we have that stacked blueprint that we're just gonna basically travel alongside the white corridors, avoiding the machines all the way over. Now, just before we do, I just remembered something. I think, yeah. So, this is gonna have to move out further. I'm gonna update that in the documents and stuff, but this needs to come out by one foundation further over. It might not have to in the grand scheme of things, but I think it's best we just do that. And I'll mention why in a moment. So we can color that inside bit red just to remember where the staircase is going to go. Alright, so shifting it over just slightly. So it's just one extra foundation along here. Because there's nothing in this space. This space is just completely empty. It's like a connection point from here to there. And one of the problems is this is a reserved block of 56 or 52 machines again. Uh, you know, 26 and 26. But it's just encroaching over here just a little bit too much so now I've just shifted things over a bit we can actually just paint this out as a corridor as well so the corridor will go above me and this is where the machines will start in the future these will be doing copper steamed sheets so something I still kind of need to figure out at least that was the plan because they're, they're done in refineries so it seemed to make sense to keep the water like the refineries all on the same floor and that way everyone's pumping up to the same level the issue there is to make copper steam sheets, they require copper ingots. And the copper ingots are supposed to be all going up to a floor above. So some of them will have to stay down, and that could disrupt the kind of look and feel. That's why we might use the ones on the end that don't quite make as much as the other blocks. 
and then bring that over this way. So it's a bit messy, a little bit messy, at least conceptually. We can make it neat, but it was just one of those things where it's like these truck stations are just a little bit too close to where I'd like them to be. Uh, otherwise, the machine's outputs are going to be right here. Uh, would have been right here, but now they're over here. So it just gives us a little bit of extra space. All right, so we're going to be flowing up this way and then taking a hard left and following along the center of this, I think. All right, so I've experimented around a little bit, and I think I figured out how to make all of these truck stations feed onto this stacked kind of layer of belts. So let's go with stacked belts with the signage on it, and we're going to go all the way out to the very edge. And this is facing the wrong way, so it just rotate it around coming towards me. Out to the very edge of the foundation, just one away. We're going to creep over that line a little bit. I think that'll be okay, the amount that we creep over that you'll see in a minute. All right, so we know that this truck station is going to be the one doing the least, as it's the one on the end of the manifold, right? So truck station, truck delivers here, 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 and then here, finally. So this one should be the one that has the least coming out of it, even when it's at a 780 belt. So what I think will work is... It's also the start of where we're sending belts out from. So we don't technically need to merge onto a belt. We can just remove it. So this is going to be going to N, and that one's going to be going to G. They're just off on their own, whereas everyone else has a buddy, right? Everyone else has two sectors, two blocks. This one just has one. These are the volume, the belts with the lowest volume. So we'll get rid of that. And then we'll just go grab our lift. And I'll have to climb this. We bring this up, aim it around. I think that's right. It's so hard to see, sorry. I get some distance here. Uh, that looks right to me. Pop that in. Go with Mark III. Oh yeah, I just put something in there to test if the belt is connected. And that feeds right out to here. So that's all well and good. So how do we get the bottom output up to the other side? Well, I was thinking just feed this out and under and over. So we try the same thing. I'm not sure what spacing we need on this, but if we look at this one, it's... Uh, that's snapped on, actually. Hang on. So it was one, two, three, four. So it needs a four spacing to get to where it needs to go. So it would have to be one, two, three, and four. And then we bring it up to the same height. I think there. Yeah, it looks good. So we grab this. And we bring this along. And now we've got two outputs traveling to two different uh, two different things. That's good. That's great. Let me just uh, get rid of all the stuff that's in here. It's just a test anyway. All right. So, yeah, there we have it. So I am going to be creeping over the end just slightly, but I think we can work around that. I don't think that's going to be too bad. The inputs and outputs that'll be here, we can just navigate around it. It won't be all the way out to the edge here anyway, so... It uh, should be fine. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> it, it'll be fine. We'll make it work. Whatever happens, we'll make it work. Damn it. Um, okay, right. So I'm just going to extend that down and keep doing that uh, to the various other ones. If you run into any problems, we'll shout it out. Uh, but the other thing would be that this needs to be Mark three. That needs to be Mark three, And that also needs to also have its belt go in there. So that's how we do it, right? Two outputs. They're on top of each other. One goes around to that side. One comes up to this side. So now we just grab this. And I'll just drag this down. And we just have to keep it in line with each other. And I always leave a gap of two. That will keep the distance between them the same because it's uh, two foundations over. So it should look good that way. All right, there we have it. So that actually went way smoother than I thought. The real under and over with the belt work worked very, very well. It just happened to be the case that we've left that bottom part open. So that's more for the piping up ahead. But here it worked out to allow us to bring belts under and up to their allocated height to match their inside brother or whatever you want to say the other output coming from the tr same truck station so the truck stations all feed onto the same height so this one's that one this truck station is this height and so on and so forth and it gets lower and lower all the way out until the fourth truck station this is actually going to be the one that receives first and we can see that that's going to go to group a and b and also h and i hi uh, so that's where these two belts are going to be going. So we have to get them to go there, basically, and bring them all the way out. Now, I've created blueprints that actually have turns in them. I didn't use it here, so I'll have to manually make that turn myself. 
Um, but I think it's just a case of moving over by two or something. But anyway, we'll do that later. So it'll be just like this, right? We have a right turn. Actually, it'll be taking a left turn, won't it? So we need to basically mirror what that does in order to make that left turn. Because I didn't do that at the beginning. But anyway, yeah, so we'll just continue out straight then. We don't need to have signs on all of them. Just use stacked belts 1x4, 2x4. Yeah, and just continue like that. I'll keep a bit of distance so that I can actually figure out how to join these correctly. And that's in the center there. It's going away from me. And this just keeps going now. Uh, so... In order to make the spacing look a little bit better, we'll just continue along that green line, but just always leave a gap at two foundations, and that way the gaps between them will look the same. So we're basically cutting down the amount we have to do by half, and not having to ever place a stackable pole, I guess, is good too. I really love the effect of the way blueprints come together as well. They did a great job with that, because they actually delayed the way... Like, it could have all been built all at the same time, but they actually offset each buildable and gave it a hierarchy, so belts and pipes go last, no matter what. Which is always such a good... It just looks great when you build them, basically, I always think. I'm in love with blueprints. Ever since they've been... Ever since you can nudge them and dismantle them, I'm like, yep, that's it, then everything is blueprints now. So we're actually going to have an, uh, a tower here, which is kind of interesting, but we can fit under this and walk right out from a doorway, so I guess that's also worked in our favor, too. Totally planned, of course. So this is, looks like one where we'll have to take a right turn. So let's have a look for that. So right turn. And we'll just line that up with its buddy back there. Now does that matter? Yeah, I don't think so. We'll just try to keep this one central. I don't mind them being a bit close for the turn. That's okay. <laughs> it's all the belts firing. Um... All right, cool. Yeah, we just keep continuing. Keep continuing, then we take a left turn as we get closer to the end. Oh, I was so close. I've run out of rods. So I'm just trying to think, though, it's going to be coming down along the center of here, I think. Alright, I think I've made the choice, yeah. I think this will continue and just go straight down the line, and that way we do avoid the uh, tower that I've built there. This just gives an idea of where these things need to go. So the interesting thing here is H and I are up there, so this will be already, this bottom right one, it's already been broken away, probably here, and just continue straight across. So we'll do that later. Um, and then this one has to basically splinter off into A and B. So it's A and B. It's already going to be manifolded, so we don't want to manifold it further. That'd be weird, um, I think. So I feel like what we'll do is grab a splitter somewhere like here. Hmm, yeah. I'm just trying to think of where it should split. <laughs> I suppose the splitter could be on the belt itself. And that would be the dividing line between the two groups. And then there's a splitter between the two groups themselves. So somewhere like here in the center of this foundation, bring that up to there. And then we get a Mark III belt, although it'll already have been split from Mark III at this point. Send that in. Let's get rid of this. So hopefully this makes sense to people. One, two. Up you go. And in you go. All right, so, all right, so just to take an example, we have the eight belts all stacked, traveling along, coming down the main bus, as it were, and then we have the A and B, and that comes and hits a splitter. It gets split from 270 currently into 135 and 135. The 135 then gets split to 67.5 and 67.5. That's not that important, but it travels down two rows. Each row will have four machines active. Because if we want to look at look at it mathematically, we know that we consume 15. So if we said uh, 67.5 divided by 15, that'd be 4.5. So we can activate 4.5 machines. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and five. And it means that the fifth machine here would have to be underclocked 
to 50% because we do it on the other side as well. So this belt has been severed just to indicate that is the max amount of machines we can feed based on our current belt speed, right? We end here. Eventually, we can go all the way to the end at uh, end of the row, 13 machines per row, 26 per block. And we know that a belt feeds two blocks. So to keep that intact without changing things around, like I said, it's built for the future. You wouldn't build it this way if you knew you were coming in at 270, you'd build it differently. But knowing we're going to be coming in at 780 in the future, that's why it's laid out this way. So we have our whoops, uh, split here, right? So there was 270 split. That other 135 travels down and does the same thing. It travels and travels and travels until it reaches the next block. And it stops halfway in between the, like in the middle point between the two inputs to divide its stuff between here and here. Just like that one, right? It's going to be a mirror copy. So that's just one example of the inputs. And it just travels manifold style along here. Now remember, the very last thing to remember would be that the blocks also have a limit to where how high up these things should go. Just to mirror the height that they're coming in from here. So again... A and B is 2 meters, C and D is 4, E and F is 6, and G is 8. And on the other side, H and I is uh, 2, J, K, 4, L, M, 6, N, 8. And that's just kind of important to remember because you can look at it and think like, oh, A and B, that's A and B, but that's not it. This one belt goes to blocks A and B for a total of 52 machines. Right, so... That's the inputs. Now, in doing the outputs, the outputs will just... Imagine we just have those five machines active, right? Four and a half machines. So it's five machines active with the fifth one underclocked. We bring this down just using conveyor lifts and keeping it on the inside. We're not facing them out to the walkway. We're facing it inside. And then a belt will just travel along. Now, ideally, we want to go underneath the stacks that we've created, right? So that's why we're at level one or at the very bottom. So we go under the stack... And we're aiming for those four, or sorry, those eight inputs, those floor holes there that carry up to those glass cases we built earlier. So you can kind of get there however you want. I'm choosing to get there by just traveling along underneath the stackables, turning left, and then turning into it again and going up. I'm doing the same on this other output line here. This output line is traveling along. It goes around the stackables and then down and in. And remember, this is both of these are just for one block. This is for A. So these next ones are going to be for block B. And they're going to look like and probably do the same thing on the other side. So something probably like that. I haven't worked it out just yet. But either way, this row here is going to come down and then feed into there. And that row is going to come down and feed along into there. And if it has to travel underneath the stackables, that's totally fine. Now, the final thing is that we're going to have water pipes in a minute coming up from here. Now, when the build is done, I'll give out the save file so people can play around with it and see how it was done and everything. But that's as clear as I can make it while we're in the thick of it. All right, so I'm going to mark as done copper outputs. I just have to obviously mirror that across multiple blocks now to get everything ready for turning on in the next episode and maybe paint a few of the machines and stuff. Right, the next thing is going to be pipe logistics. And this is be the final thing we'll do today. We're just going to hook up one area here with water and uh, water extractors and show how that's all going to be done. Now, I've, again, blueprints are our friend for this kind of thing. Floor pumps, floor, pipe, pump, and valve. So we only need one of those, which I can actually do right now. And do I have what I need for piping already? A uh, little tight. I might have to go run, make a run and just grab some copper sheets. Just I've left some at base. I'll just drive down to it. Uh, so while I'm just down at my little mini base thing here where I have all my materials, we're just going to go into the Caterium chain again and scroll down to power switches. 100 steel beams and 50 AI limiters will allow us to get power switches where we can turn things on and off and uh, shut down or power on parts of the grid. What does that require? Supercomputers, we need high-speed connectors, and circuit boards. I actually might be able to get that soon because I'm pretty sure I've picked up enough high-speed connectors just out at crash sites already, but we'll see. Anyways, yeah, the priority power switch is new to Update 8. I never really used it before, but it could be kind of cool in a place like this, which is kind of unwieldy, and it may cause power outages. 
Uh, so what was I looking for? I was looking for the copper sheeting. There we go. Just take it all. All right, let's get to it. All right, we're back down at the belt floor, the horrendous belt floor. And this is where we want to go. So, in the central point of a walkway, right in the center of it, is where I've marked out an area where we're going to bring in uh, some water pipes. So, we're going to be cutting it quite fine, quite close to that area. But let's just trim away this part. Trim away this part. Now we've got access to the water down below. This is why I said I don't know where the walkways are going to go, because things will change just a little bit. Now, using blueprints, we'll access the floor pipe pump and valve. And yes, I have tested the blueprint, tested using it as a blueprint, placing a blueprint and activating it, and it works. Uh, something I might do is change the orientation of the pump so that it's not necessarily encroaching on the belt, but that's just a small thing, I guess. So we're in line now. Looks totally fine. Let's commit to it. All right, there we go. So very simple. So what we've got is a valve, All right? We needed a little bit of rubber to build these. It's locked at 300, or it's open to 300, I guess you could say, because that's our max flow rate as it stands. And uh, yeah, very simply, this pipe is gonna split and go down that way. So effectively, if we have a look at the water consumption of a block, right? A block has 52 machines in total, or will do. Sorry, no it doesn't. A block has 26 machines. And there's actually only 10 consumption of water per refinery. So that's 260 water. Quite a low amount. So a double block, an A and B, for instance, would have 52 machines. So that's 520. Pretty good number. We don't hit that 600 number where there's a little bit of weird stuff happening with pipes at 600. But at 520, we should be totally fine. So 52 times 10, 520. So that means that our initial pipe that comes up is going to split into two blocks. So that one and that one, right? That's one block there, A and B. So we're gonna divide up between that one and this one. So just for now, we'll just do with on, we'll go with this side. So this is what I was saying earlier with, uh, we're gonna have to go up and over, but I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's better. Okay, cool, I've got it. So again, to, to mirror this on the other side, we'll go here, up to three. And then we go to the center of that foundation, just keep it at the bottom. Let's connect that back in. Now to make it look, yeah, it does look the same. That's okay. So just grab that again. Sorry. And then we want to go just auto 2D. Just go straight across. It's kind of cool. I used to do that before and put valves on those so you can kind of interact with them at, like you're without having to crouch down or something. All right. So that's up and over. And then we just stay under now. And we're totally fine. But what we're going to have to do is select here as a junction cross. Right there. Continue this one over. One, two. Is that aligned? Didn't look like it was. Game is trying to trick me. All right, so there we go. Super easy. <laughs> oh. All right, and that's that. So what we have to do is just obviously connect these up. So we're only connecting the first five. Only the first five can be active. So it'll be one, two, three, four. Five. Thanks to our blueprints, our spacing is all correct and everything, so we're looking good. So now, I'll just go into my custom swatches. I have pipe water. That's bugged or whatever, so we'll click this one. And then I'll just go with white as a secondary. I don't think the secondary will really matter anyway. If we now press G, we can set a filter so it's just on the pipelines. I just paint across, which is quite nice to do that. Don't have to worry about hitting the uh, hitting anything else, really. It's all water anyway. Yeah, just makes life a little easier. Like I said, the head lift is going all the way up there, so it doesn't lose head lift coming back down or anything. It just stays consistently high, so that should be fine. Uh, so actually, you can actually determine the head lift by when you're placing one of these. It's already placed though, so I'll just leave it. Don't want to don't want to mess with it. Um, all right, so that obviously will need its own power and everything. So, what we got to do now is go downstairs, effectively, and line up with the floor hole here and start hanging or connecting the water extractors. So, let's do this all in real time. We'll just hop downstairs. 
The unfortunate thing is you won't get to see it power on now. <laughs> Look at the, the lone little floor hole that we have. So cute. Uh, so yeah, so let's see. Can I line up with this? I think we're already in line with it. That was just total coincidence. That's where we came up before. So we grab this horizontal to vertical. Bring it all the way down. And that's the spot where it's coming from, right? It's on the seam of two foundations. So that's where it's trying to come from. I'll just bring this across to... Oh, the pipe is too long, really? Maybe the halfway point here? Oh, it won't let me do that either. Oh, I guess it is one giant pipe. Okay, well, fair enough. We'll go to there then. I feel like we need to clear as much as we can, though, actually. Oh, yeah, it's just a bit too much. Is that enough? Yeah, I think so, actually, because I'm going to be putting a pump on it. That's why I wanted to know. All right, we'll just keep that at the bottom. Nice. Now, I've got a little blueprint that should help us with this area, although i I got to be honest, I don't remember how to use it, so I'm just going to put some concrete around here for a moment. And then we'll place it down in just one sec. Autosave kicking in. All right. So, architecture, pipe scaffolding. This is just for us to run up and down the pipe and work with a little bug that's in the game that we nobody likes. So, that looks pretty good. We'll just shift this over just even a bit more. Keep that pipe fairly central. Yeah, I think that's where we want to be. Yep, so it's just scaffolding that's supposed to go around the pipe, basically. Alright, how nice is that? Now we can just run up and down our own pipe and check it against uh, the pumps and different things that we have to put onto it. So do I have what I need for a pump? Actually, I didn't check. Yes, I do. Thank Jeebus. I must have kept some rotors on me for some reason. Alright. So, what we'll do is just drag this out. We'll put it to Auto TD. Not that it really matters at this point. Just drag this all the way out. As far as we can go. And we'll start with our first pump here. Now, to get the pump to snap onto something nice, we can put a junction down just close by. Like at the center point of that foundation. And then hold control, and it snaps. Now, just to make sure that that's all right. It's a little close to the bend. You know, I'm just trying to not cause any problems for water in this game. So we'll bring it a bit closer to here. Let's see if that's a bit better. Yeah, that it just looks a little bit better to me. All right, we'll lock that in. That's our first pump. Now you get some head lift from the water extractors. We're just gonna ignore that and start from a, a bottom point. Cause starting from here, you can't really snap onto anything and people were worried about how far up it's supposed to go. This should make everything a lot easier. We're starting at the bottom. Now all we have to do is select a pipeline pump and look at the pipe and we can actually see where it's going to end its head lift. So it stops right there. So we'll just let it snap onto us. I'm not even holding control. It just snaps on, lock it in, and then we just keep going up. We have to have one more just before the top. Now this is facing the wrong way. Make sure you're facing the correct direction. Snap that in. And we'll just go to the very top now. All right, so we're at the very top now. The reason we've come up here is because we need to delete this and put it back. That's all. We don't have to do anything else, I don't think. So we'll choose horizontal to vertical. Select this spot, select that spot. And that is us connected. The floor hole should be connected now because it's a little bug in the game where if you put a pump on a pipeline that is already connected to a floor hole, the floor hole stops working. But if you just redraw the pipe, it should work. That is my observation. Now, just to make sure that doesn't happen anywhere else, we're just going to redraw the pipe from every pump. So we just went from the top. We did the top one first. We've done that one next. And now we'll do this bottom one. And with horizontal to vertical, it should keep that bend as it were. Okay, cool. Now, I'll leave the scaffolding in place until we turn the place on, and then we'll check against these and just make sure they are working. This will also need to be, uh, what's it called? Powered. So there's one there, there's another one, and there's another one. And this will have to just come down. Alright, cool. Okay, making some progress. Next up, we need water extractors. So the water extractors, it's difficult. We don't have foundations that we can put on the bottom, so we just have to try to line these up. Do I have what I need for water extractors? Yes, I do. Only for three, though. But okay, three is actually, we only need two, but there will be five in the future. So let's say that we want them to be in the center point of two foundations. So again, what we can do is get something like a pipeline junction, like here. 
putting it on the foundation should allow us to put down the water extractor holding control and snap into it. Now we don't really have a snap point to get close to the the edge, but I'm pretty happy with that just so that the yeah, just try to get so that the pipe is just about like the seam or whatever. It's just about to touch on the edge of the foundation. Something like that's probably fine, you know. I'll just lock that one in. Now, if the math is correct on these things, I think we can just grab one and press control, looking at the other one, and snap it onto the next, and snap this onto the next. And if it's done it correctly, I believe this will be the center point. All right, it looks like it's aligned. And this should be aligned. Yeah, there we go. That's all good. All right, now we'll just continue this one down a little further. I'm gonna put down a pipe junction cross just right in its face, just for a second. And then we'll just like do this, right? So holding control, snapping onto it. It might have snapped onto it anyway. I just like to be just ultra sure. And then we delete that, delete that, and delete that. We can just connect these up now normally. I just want to stress that this is through rigorous testing. This does work. So I'm trying to do this as methodically as possible. And now we can cut these and we're going to redraw. We always redraw the pipes. The first placement is really just to get it to do what we want, to line up where we want, and then we redraw to get in. And then we'll just redraw one last time. And in fact, I'm going to get rid of that now. That doesn't really need to be there. That doesn't need to be there. Just redraw it back in. It says horizontal to vertical, but that's okay. All right. So now everything has had a fresh pipe after the pumps have been placed, yeah? After the water extractor has been placed, everything's had a fresh pipe. So I do believe that should allow these things to work with no problems. <laughs> oh, I actually did forget one thing. We need a buffer. We don't need it, but I like to have one. Oh, yes, I've got what I need for a buffer. Right, we'll cut this here. And just turn this and put this on the center point as well of that. And that will feed into the buffer. The reason I want a buffer, it's a bit complicated. I could go on and explain it for a long time. You'll see in the next episode, but the... The basic reasoning is that we're going to flood the machines with water first, which is called priming them, right? We're priming the machines. Every machine will have a capacity, every refinery has a capacity of 50 water. So we're going to make sure they all fill up to 50 before then we activate and send in the copper ore. Once that happens, um, well, to, uh, basically, in order to know that the machines are full without having to run up and check every machine, we can just wait until this buffer fills. And when the buffer fills, we know all the machines upstairs are done. That's what I'm using the buffer for. You don't need to do that, but I'm doing it, and it should work just fine. So then down here, we're going to flip a switch, which will activate a line of copper to release and go into the refineries, in theory. <laughs> That switch could be as simple as just the one that comes out of the truck station, to be honest. Or you can do... We could do something else. But anyway, uh, getting ahead of myself. That'll all be in the next episode. So right, that's um, that's pretty much it. That's water extraction. Of course, these need to be hooked up to power as well. So I might organize this power a little bit better in the future, but three of these will be no problem. Now, we're going to go feed into... I mean, we can't do any more than 18. So 18 and the water consumption is 10. Yes, yeah, so it's just 180. So I believe it's 120, and then this one just has to be underclocked to 50%. And that's it. We don't actually even need the third one. So I'm going to cut that. We'll just leave that there. Alright, so there we go. We only need two water extractors for our current level. Obviously in the future, five is ideal. And these floor holes are going to exist every two blocks. So we're not even going to have another one of these for quite a ways down. You know, somewhere down there we'll have another one, somewhere down there we'll have another one, and then on the opposite side we'll have other ones as well. And that'll be it for our water extract. Alright, so I've marked the pipe logistics and water extraction as done. I'm now going to be saving up materials and adding in, you know, duplicates of this setup over and over per every block. So we basically, I basically have showed you how to do two blocks. And there's 14. So, you know. <laughs> have fun <laughs> but yeah I'll be doing it too you know I'll be making it as well and I'll be on my discord talking through things if anything changes it should be recognized before the next episode so always maybe wait until the next episode before going ahead but I think this I can't see anything wrong with this 
and I've tested the water extractors. I've tested everything. It does work. Everything stays online for a long time. Um, so I ran it for a couple hours. Basically, I ran the I ran two blocks for a couple of hours, and I was like, "Yeah, this works. This works." in a sort of creative mode. So now we're here on the ground, boots on the ground, building it, and I don't see why it wouldn't work. So hopefully we're locked in. Next episode, we connect this bad boy up to power. We do a little bit with Caterium, and we set up the miners out in the world to deliver copper ore into this facility. And then we activate it, turn it all on, make our first bits of copper ingots, and we also do the assembly floor. So there's still a lot to pack in for the next episode. I'm gonna go ahead now, add in the rest of the towers, add in the rest of the machines that I can, Add in the rest of the glass cases, the white, the, the water, the pipe logistics, all of that stuff. So that's going to have to be it for me. I look forward to seeing the feedback on this one. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.